Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Now this video is slightly different to the usual ones. What we're actually looking at is attending two matches for the same price as it would cost to attend one match. Now you might be thinking, is that a Premier League match? No, it's a cost for League 2 match. Everyone knows how expensive football is in the UK, but this goes all the way down and League 2 is particularly overpriced. Hi mate. All right, mate. One please, if that's right. Six pounds please. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So I looked online and the cheapest ticket I could see to attend a Walsall fixture in League 2 was £24. So for that same price we're seeing what we can get and today we're in Tier 9 of English football as Walsall would look to potentially secure the Midland Premier Division title depending on results elsewhere. Entry into the ground was £6 and they were also doing a raffle at the door which was a pound so that was £7 from the get-go. We've got £17 left, let's see what else we could get. Now i just eaten so wasn't going to eat again but there's quite a few people milling around at this kiosk at the halfway line. There weren't any prices so unfortunately couldn't tell you the price but I'm sure it was decent value. Back now by the turnstiles and you enter to the club bar and the toilets through there. We didn't pop in at the moment but we do pop in later so I can show you around then. Walsall Woods Ground is called the Oak Park and it's gone under a lot of redevelopment in recent years. However this original stand from the 1930s is believed to be the last of its kind and it was great to see. I'm not sure how comfortable it would have been to sit on but it had a great view of the pitch and was certainly interesting for me to see from a ground hop perspective. After wandering around a bit more, it's nearly time for kickoff. And just like that, the game's underway. Walsall Wood in red, taking on Shifnal Town in their away colours. In front of me, behind the far goal, you can see a memorial to the area's mining history, if Wikipedia is to be believed. But for now, we'll move further around the pitch to get a side on view. Just as we're setting up, I decide to adjust my lens and flick it off into the leaves the other side of the barrier and can't find it for the rest of the game. Fair to say I may be slightly distracted. But Walsall Wood do their best to keep me engaged and win a corner at the far end of the pitch. Fair to say it could be one of the scrappy goals I've seen, but it could mean promotion for them, so I'm sure they're not bothered. Shout out to the person doing the goal announcements, I've never heard one so quickly at this level. It's fair to say, when the football was out of play, I was spending my whole time trying to look in the foliage beneath me, to no avail. Back on the pitch, it was fair to say it was a fairly scrappy game, but it was very interesting and you can't beat how close you can get to the action at this level. You feel like you could almost tackle the players yourself. Well, if I had any football and ability, I maybe could. Although then again, seeing some of the tackles on display, maybe I could get out there. It's fair to say without having any absolute sitters, Walsall Wood were getting the far better of the chances. God, I love the tackling at this level. Shifnal Town get their first decent chance of the half. And dogged defending sees Walsall Wood get through to half time with a 1 0 lead. Lightown were in second place, and at half time that was 0 0. I believe this wasn't quite enough to give Walsall Wood the league title, so you'd have to hope for a goal against Lye in the second half. I'm sure there'd be some nerves in the Walsall Wood dressing room, but they should have enough to hopefully see this out. And just like that, the second half's underway. Can Shifnal Town pull it back, or will Walsall Wood grab another three points in their bid for the league title? I tried to get the other side of the barrier at half time, but I didn't want to just step over and was too nervous to ask. So instead, here I am scanning the leaves again. 
Now, to be completely honest, the second half wasn't the best spectacle I've ever seen, but it was an important game for Walsall Wood, and it's fair to say that they were getting the job done, whether or not it was the most beautiful game of football. Around this time, Lytown had scored, so it became clear that Walsall Wood weren't going to get promoted today. Protect the camera. Let us take on the brunt of it. And with a nervy second half that wasn't fantastic for the neutral coming to the end, Walsall Wood are surely on their way to guarantee the three points. And just like that, Walsall Wood leave themselves with two games to play and they are four points clear at the top of the table. Not quite enough to secure the title today, but following this result, on Tuesday night, Walsall Wood played Romulus and they won 3-0, which was enough to guarantee them promotion as champions from the Midland Premier, Premier Division. And on Tuesday night, Walsall Wood secured the title with a 3-0 victory over Romulus. This night, they also had free entry with donations instead to a charity, so congratulations to them on that. Now, can I find my lens? And things I certainly wasn't expecting, we were able to find the lens. I'd looked online and it was 45 quid, so safe to say I was pretty relieved at this point. Into the club bar we go, very modern with a dartboard, pool table, TV showing the delayed Grand National and lots of seating for home and away players and fans. I did ask for a pin badge but they didn't have one unfortunately. The other memorabilia wouldn't have got any use so instead we grabbed a Pepsi Max for 150. That sees today's spend 850 meaning that we've got another £15.50 tomorrow to get anywhere close to the price we'd have to spend just for entry for a Walsall fixture. This was certainly entertaining for myself, and let's see what the options are for tomorrow and how we can possibly get closer to that budget. So we're back to Walsall. It's 1.35. I didn't realise the match kicks off at 2.15, so let's hotfoot it to try and get there in time for kickoff. So this is clearly the video where everything goes wrong. We did actually manage to get there two minutes after kickoff, but due to the issues parking, this is currently about 10 to 15 minutes after kickoff, and we're about an 18 minute walk from the stadium. Fair to say we'll have to get a bit of running in, but the match that we're going to see today is Aston Villa versus Chelsea at the Bescott Stadium. This is the FA Cup Women's Semi-Final, and I'm very much looking forward to the game when we get in there. The time at this point was about 23 minutes after kickoff. We're right by the stadium, and thankfully, the stand that we're in is the one closest to the road here, meaning we don't have to run around the stadium as a whole. I would have kept running, but I felt like a bit of a wally. And there it is, our first view of the Bescott Stadium for this video. It is a stadium I've been to before, supporting Rochdale as an away fan. However, I don't particularly have good memories of the ground because I don't think I've ever seen us get a decent result here. The capacity of Walsall's Bescott Stadium is around 11,300, I believe. I don't think they were quite at that number today, um, but I'll be able to give you the official attendance later, um, and not all of the stands were fully open, but it'd be a great atmosphere, I'm sure, for the semi-final. And for any football fans, you may notice this stadium when you drive on the M6 motorway, it is particularly visible. But now, let's get inside. Brilliant. Is that me missing the cheers of a goal? Yeah, good cheers. Thank you. Second turnstile in two days. Fair to say I couldn't do this every weekend or I'd be getting dumped soon. As I got into the stadium, about 28 minutes had been played, but I was glad to hear that the cheer wasn't for a goal at least. I'm not quite sure obviously how the first 28 minutes went, but it was nil-nil as we were in there. From what I saw after this, it was a very end-to-end -end performance, so here's for hoping we'd see some goals. I wouldn't be in the first half, Fair to say there weren't fantastic chances that I saw, but also I didn't want to get my camera out as I was still a bit flustered from turning up late. So as we take a look around, the stadium was opened in 1990 by Sir Stanley Matthews. To the right is the St Francis Group Community Stand. Ahead of us is the Poundland Stand, I believe, and to the left is the Main Stand. We're currently in the University of Wolverhampton Stand, which on normal match days is used for away fans. In this game, it was split 
between Villa fans on the left hand side and Chelsea fans on the right hand side. There's no firm segregation but tickets have been assigned in such a way. Now I know some people aren't fans of flags at the football but I felt for today's game it added to it. It was especially useful um, for the young fans who were particularly interested in it. I know for a lot of people this is probably their first women's football match that they've been to see live or certainly if not the first, the first in a while. So it was great to give the fans something that they could easily use to get behind the team. And it's fair to say the atmosphere as a whole was very good for our. Second half underway, nil nil at half time. Let's hope there's some goals and some entertainment. No sooner has the second half kicked off than Chelsea are hitting the bar. This should be a great second half of football. I didn't get any food at the best got, but fair to say the pundits certainly weren't a fan as they've opted to order in the Nando's instead of having the stadium food. Great excitement from the Villa fans here until they've realised that it's actually rippled the side netting and it's still nil-nil. But great chance and it's a fair to say Villa are in the ascendancy at this moment in time. No sooner have I said that than Chelsea are up the other end. Sam Kerr poking in at the back stick. Now while they were obviously outnumbered by the Villa fans, it's fair to say the Chelsea fans here provided a great atmosphere throughout the match as a whole, but particularly so when they scored. Fair to say, I'm sure they're just happy to be celebrating some victories at the moment as they're not getting any with the men's teams. Villa still had great opportunities but they just didn't seem to know when to pull the trigger or be able to convert any of these fantastic chances. A solid save, but not the shot that asks the most questions if we're being honest. A quick look at the food menu as we run to Lou. It is pretty expensive, but the whole point of this video is it's in a League 2 ground and League 2 is expensive. With that said, nothing says football to me like Bovril and £2.70, I couldn't say no. Add that to the £12 ticket price and the total spend for today is at £14.70. Away from food and drink and back to the football, Villa kept asking questions, especially down this right hand side, but they just couldn't get the ball in the back of the net. More fantastic opportunities followed, still no end result. At this point, it's fair to say that the old adage was true that Villa were playing for their FA Cup lives. Chelsea, on the other hand, were defending doggedly to make sure that they stayed in the competition. Her opportunity goes begging as Villa hit the post. They really did deserve a goal based on what I'd seen, but Chelsea weren't letting them have it. A great opportunity at the back stick, but as the commentators on FIFA would say, high, wide and not so handsome. A late free kick for Villa and potentially one last opportunity to put the ball in the box. But it comes to nothing, Chelsea clear, and even more worryingly, Sam Kerr is through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and you will surely double a goal tally. A good save by the keeper keeps Villa just about in it with seconds to go. But unfortunately for Villa, it wasn't to be. Chelsea take the 1-0 victory at full time and progress through to the final at Wembley, where they will be playing current Super League leaders, Manchester United. The Villa players looked absolutely deflated after this game and they put in a great performance. Emma Hayes, Chelsea manager, said it was a scrappy game, it was end-to-end -end and very enjoyable for a neutral and I think Villa will feel hard done by that none of their opportunities found the way into the back of the net. The attendance at this fixture was 5,300 and not many less than that stuck around to cheer off both sets of players off the pitch at the end of the match. Villa did obviously lose but came in as firm underdogs and it was fair to say the fans appreciated the performance that they'd given. Fair to say that 
the chants from the Chelsea fans at full time were better than the classic. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. And with that, it was my time to leave the stadium. So looking back, we've spent £14.70 today, which include the match ticket and the Bovril, £12 for the ticket, £2.70 for the Bovril, and we spent £8.50 yesterday. This was £6 on the ticket, £1 on the raffle, and £1.50 on the Pepsi Max. So in total, we'd spent £23.20. This is 80p less than if we'd have just bought a League 2 ticket. Now this isn't a slight on Walsall or League 2 as a whole. I know that the cost of running football clubs is expensive and they need to claw some of that money back. But when looking at this purely from a value standpoint, for me it's very clear that going to two matches provides far better value. Both of the matches were both entertaining and provided great value for money. Now you won't want to go to two football matches every weekend, but it's just something to consider. If you're spending that amount of money on football, why not try something different and try the lower tiers or the women's game? If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Next week we're back to our 8Z challenge and hopefully a promotion.